to that young girl who has a dream of being a technologist one day, being a STEM woman, I want to tell you that there's no dream that is very big for you to achieve. If you can dream it, then you can make it. Keep pushing. No matter what you face, never give up. If you want to change the world, change the girl child. My name is Dorothy Bundi. I am a lecturer at uh, the School of uh, Computing and Informatics in the Department of Computer Science and specifically um, teaching units and courses in uh, computer forensic. My name is Nancy Maina. I am a third year student at Mary University of Science and Technology studying Bachelor of Technology in Civil Engineering. And my name is uh, Dr. Njoi Nyoira Ryongo. Currently I'm employed at Mary University of Science and Technology as a lecturer in the School of Engineering and Architecture, Department of Civil Engineering. Uh, but more to that, I am the Director, Sanitation Research Institute. This is just a newly established institute within the university. My name is Dorcas Aparasi. I'm a second year student at Mary University of Science and Technology, taking Bachelor of Science in Data Science. My name is Teresia Mozonichegi. I'm currently a second year student at the Mary University of Science and Technology. I'm pursuing a bachelor's degree in data science. My name is Mary Asunta Gasheri. I am a lecturer at Mary University of Science and Technology in the School of Computing and Informatics, Department of Information Technology. I am also the director for Open Distance and Electronic Learning at Mary University. Working at a must for me has been one of the best experiences, has given me one of the best experiences ever. Uh, I joined this university in the year 2011 and have not along the way had this urge to move to a greener, to, uh, to get another greener place. I wouldn't say that I'm paid more than the others, but I would say this based on the comfort, the freedom, and the support that we get from our management. Since Mary University has given us platform as girls, it has accommodated us. Uh, and I will say proudly that I am very comfortable working at Mary University where girls and women and ladies are recognized, that our opinion matters, that the senior management even appoint us to different positions, come to the chairs of department, come to the dean's position, come to the DVC position. We have a girl seated there who is managing the university finance and uh, administration issues. So Mary University acknowledges and recognizes there is need to bridge the gap and bring in girls in, uh, in career and also in leadership and even in administration. And I would encourage that that parent who is listening to us as they are planning to make a decision and choose where to take their children, Mary University should be the first option. We have lecturers who are women, we are there, and uh, they come in and we mentor them. We have career talks for these girls. We have a, a, a walkway where we walk with them from the day we admit them until we graduate them. So they will not walk alone. They will not lack mentors in the university. We have, uh, we have obeyed the government rule over that rule, and we have many girls in STEM who are willing to work with them as their mentors. Okay, one of the major reasons why we should have more women in these STEM-related courses is that we are able to, to fight the discrimination that women are facing in this particular field and that we are able to prove it to the world that also women can be able to do what others think they can't. Uh, it is very important. In fact, I'll start by saying uh, I always tell my, because as, as, as I started by saying I am a lecturer, I tell my girls in class what boys can do, girls can do better. Number one is that when we have girls in the career of STEM, of course that keenness 
yeah, they are, they, that particular, yeah, you know the way girls are particular, girls are keen in doing things, they excel best. And once they excel, it brings even economical growth. And of course, reducing of stereotypes, where we have a dominated field of men and we come in as girls and excel. Uh, and especially when I see we admit girls in the program, in the STEM programs, like now where I am in technology, and one I see we graduate them. Of course, what we are doing, we are empowering the world. Uh, there is a saying that if you want to change the world, change the girl child. And once you've changed the girl child, you would have changed the world. So definitely the impact we bring in when we enroll more girls in technology and in STEM courses, it means the mother is carrying it and the world is going to change. Women in Technology is a club at Mary University of Science and Technology which involves young ladies who've come together to empower each other, especially in the STEM courses, that is science, technology, engineering and mathematics, where we get to nurture each other and get the required skills for us in the industry, so that when we get out, we'll be confident women and dominate in these areas. The women who have inspired me to be a part of a science-related course is one of them is my aunt. Actually, she was the one who introduced me into into these science-related courses, and I find her to be a great motivation and uh, encourager. She keeps on encouraging me to navigate into this space. And second, I would like to give credit to my mother. She keeps on encouraging me and giving me motivation to push on. Despite the fact that she thinks this is a very difficult course, I keep on telling her that I'm able to conquer everything that comes along and, I'm ab and I will be able to graduate someday. Okay, I will say my inspiration came from my secondary school mathematics teacher, Mrs. Matombe. She is currently teaching, I think, at Meru School. And I remember at those early ages, she was so passionate about mathematics and I was admiring her, the way she was uh, very good in mathematics. And uh, that really influenced me. And I was uh, seeing that if a, such a lady would be eloquent to do maths well, why not me? And uh, she became one of the persons I live to admire to today. I am where I am because of women who believed in me. The first, the first one is my mother. She's an inspiring to me. Uh, the second one is my pastor, Pastor Phyllis Kanana. And the third one is my mentor, Madam Susan Wanyoni. Uh, my greatest inspirer along this journey, my academic journey, is my mom. She's a housewife, but she really knows the need for education. Uh, having terminated her nursing course prematurely makes her regret to date, and those are many decades ago. So she always wished that her girls would not live that life that she lived, but live a better life. Because she feels if she completed a program, she would give them the kids better. But we thank God because she had that information, she inspired us, and we are where we are today. I also have a very strong mentor who was my supervisor called Dr. Mariska Lontertab from Netherlands. This lady seriously inspired me that no matter what, keep pushing. No matter what you face, never give up. And this journey belongs to the strong. So Dr. Mariska seriously inspired me into being what I am today, especially even completing my PhD program. You need this per person to, to push you, to push you and help you up. I have so many other women, my friends. I have very many women friends at Mary University of Science and Technology here who always wish the best for you. In my academic life, after my form form, I was admitted to Egerton University where I pursued a career in agricultural engineering. Uh, this was a five-year program, BSc. In this program, we were only five ladies. 
so and 45 men we composed that class uh, successively passed that stage and actually I graduated being the third in that particular group. I wanted to make it in this field. Um, I felt it was challenging and I took the challenge. I worked hard, very hard into the field. Even when I completed my, my undergraduate, I still went and took a further master's degree still in technology. I worked hard, I managed to uh, to pass and to excel in what I had. I still worked hard and still working hard in my PhD, same field in technology. And even when I walk into that, uh, that classroom where you have now to instruct uh, people who are in the field of technology, you have to work hard in preparing these materials. Thank you very much. Uh, it is very, very important to have women very well represented in STEM courses. By nature, the needs of women and men are very different. The need of a man and my need are completely different. So I better understand, especially in my field of sanitation, I better understand what women require, the challenges facing women in this particular sanitation field. So being in this field, I am representative of my fellow women. I know their needs. I know how sanitation affects them. So if it is a woman, a man in my position will better address the needs of the men. So it is always good to have equal representation. Women represented and also men represented. So that when you are addressing that particular society need, you approach it in a in a in, in an inclusive way you're including the needs of men and you're also including the needs of women so if you have only one gender then one group will always be oppressed because their needs will always be underlooked yes stereotype is real and i can say it is true it is happening especially to ladies and uh i would say not in stem only but it's very rampant because when it comes now to, st to STEM, we are few of us. So we relate because we are just few. And I have faced it in my workplaces. You get to be appointed in a position and people think that, ah, oh, it's because it's a lady. Uh, it's because of the skirt, you know. We get these things because we are qualified for them, because we work hard, and because they have seen that potential that many people do not see in women. To that young girl who has a dream of being a technologist one day, being a STEM woman, being an engineer, being a civil engineer, being a mechanical engineer, being a lecturer in computing, I want to tell you that there's no dream that is very big for you to achieve. If you can dream it, then you can make it. Uh, I have a message to the young girl across the world uh, who will want to pursue a science-related course. Uh, first of all, you need to believe in yourself, uh, have focus. By doing that, you will be able to achieve anything in this world. I would assure them that in STEM for us women, there is no competition. Surely there is no competition in STEM fields because the opportunities for women are very many. So just keep focused, know what you want and go for it. Have the patience, good things comes to those who wait. One of the key things they need to change is their attitude. By the way, it all starts in the mind and you believe in yourself. That even if this is a field that is dominated by men, and as I said earlier, what boys can do, girls can do better. One, they need to change their attitude. Number two, they need to believe in themselves. And number three, they take the step and apply the course. I think you need to wear your shoes and become very strong and work hard and show up. So on behalf of Mary University of Science and Technology, a university that we love so much, I want to take this opportunity to wish you all a happy International Day for women and girls in science. May God bless you.